Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Here at Kispoko Town, again, we're always having trouble with that emerald ash borer and ash trees are in great trouble. So as spiritual people, people of the earth here at Kispoko Town, we've come together to do a carving on the tree. And this carving is a medicine turtle. And it is a prayer for the ash trees. Uh, this, this old tree here is another, it was a beautiful, beautiful shade tree. Um, this is one of the dead ash trees. And so we carved the medicine turtle in here. And what you have here is the turtle. And that symbols the, symbolizes the earth, Mother Earth, turtle, turtle island. And so that's the symbol of the earth. And then you have the cross here in the middle. That's a symbol of the tree of life, the origin of the cross. And so there is the tree of life. So it is a earth prayer for the ash trees. And so it faces east. And so every day when the sun rises, that sun hits the prayer turtle and activates it and pushes the power of that prayer directly into the ground so that those ash trees and that emerald ash borer will leave us and these ash trees will come back for us. And so this is a prayer here in Kispoko Town. Here at Kispoko Town, we have a lot of interesting things for you to come on out and see. This place is completely free and open to you, you the people, to come and be a part of the village and spend some time here. Uh, this is an interesting feature here at Kispoko Town. A lot of people go, what in the world is that? And some people say, it's a chicken coop. And I say, you're right, because at one point, we did have a little door here and we could stick our chickens in there and we could have our chickens in there. But what the great thing about it is, is during the woodlands, again, these are agricultural people. So we have corn, beans, and squash that have to be stored. Now, a lot of times they were storing for long-term storage till the next planting season in pits in the ground. And we find them today as trash pits and archeologists are just thrilled when they find a big pile of trash left there behind by the Fort Ancient in one of their pit trash cans. Uh, but what that doesn't say is that above ground for that immediate use and plus for drying the agricultural products, mainly the corn, you have to have an above ground place, especially in Ohio, because everything rots in Ohio. This is a corn crib and we can access it right through here. We got some nice leather hinges on there holding that up. And we just incised a hollow sycamore tree to create a hollow, put a little uh, shake shingle roof on it. And now we can put our recently harvested corn in here. And even if it's a real humid day, like it usually is in Ohio, we can put a little char fire, a little charcoal fire down underneath of this and that'll create that wonderful wood smoke again that will coat and protect and dry keep things dry especially if we have one of our constant rains like we have sometimes 24 hours straight here in Ohio so this is going to be a major feature in any living village if you're making a harvest you're gonna have to store your stuff and protect it somewhere and so this is our corn silo our corn crib and it also can be a chicken crib chicken coop. And here at Kispoko Town, we have another dwelling from the southeast. We're calling this house our mound house. We've been doing some experimental archaeology where we've been uh, sourcing some of the local clay to build up the structure. Uh, the house is in a sur perfect circular, circular pattern. This is the type of house you would have seen on top of the big mounds, uh, Cahokia and the Mississippian people. You would have seen these round houses on top of a large mound, they would have been covered with bark. Um, they would have uh, tem temporarily and then eventually would have been thatched like our uh, thatched house that you saw earlier. Uh, this house, we use this one as a spiritual leader's house. Our people that keep the music and the drum and the language, they spend their time in this house. And it's perfectly lined up with the Eastern sunrise. And when we get over to the uh, uh, wigwam, we'll talk a little bit more about how that works with the earth. And so you have the medicine wheel laid out with the sacred fire in the middle. And so we have our spiritual leaders that stay in our mound house here, representing again the southeastern people that have come so visit. Here at Kispoko Town, we have another dwelling, the domed wigwam. As we know, the arch is the strongest structure known to mankind. And in the domed wigwam, we have seven interlocking arches to create the structure of this dwelling. 
Again, we've used the uh, ash wood, ash bark, uh, to cover the structure. And it's framed up with a pretty traditional framing, mainly because we have to, every arch has to be bent. And we can't quite get away with that with the ash because again, it's all dead, right? So there has to be, but fortunately, the ODNR, the Ohio Division of Wildlife, is calling an area of willow stand. And so we can go over there and we can get that fresh willow, which is a very traditional construction material uh, in the eastern woodlands especially. And so this one is framed up with that wonderful willow. So that's very traditional. But then again, breaking the norm of the American elm uh, bark, we're now using the ash bark uh, to cover the dwelling. And what's interesting about these dwellings is that they're in every single culture around the entire world. They are not a, uh, a specific to a certain people. The dome uh, wigwam has been used all through time. And it's a simple thing, a simple uh, way to construct it. There's a story that goes with it. And what it is is that it is a uh, 3D symbology of the Mother Earth. And what you have is you have the, the whole dome shape is about the womb of the mother. And then you would have had a fire pit in the middle. And that is the heartbeat. That's where the heart of the mother is that keeps you warm inside. And the door always faces east. Why? That's so that you can be reborn each day with the new sun. So you come out from the womb to be reborn each day of the sun. The smoke hole at the top, well, this is the throat of the mother where the prayers go up to the creator through the smoke hole. So it's the embodiment of the sacred feminine of Mother Earth is what a wigwam is. And that's how it's designed, and that's the way it's made. Now, these dwellings were very temporary, uh, no matter where they're used. Uh, they were used typically in the eastern woodlands. Uh, they were semi-nomadic and that they would move a couple times a year. They would have their summer villages where they would do all their planting of their corn, beans, and squash. But then what happens is during the summer, you spend a lot of time clearing the forest to make farmland. Well, with each family needing somewhere around seven acres of cultivated land, when you got a village of 200 people, that's a lot of cleared space, a lot of cleared space. And some of the first Europeans, some of the Spanish that came in said that they saw corn ever, way before they ever saw any American Indians. So there were corn as far as you could see. Corn was king, right? Okay, so they would be in their summer villages in the summertime during the planting season. Then after the harvest, when, see in the summer, you don't need so much fuel. The wood is fuel, right? So you don't need it, you need it for to cook with. You're not gonna get cold, so you don't really need it to keep warm. And they weren't on the light like we are, so it wasn't a real big deal. You need it for a little light, you need it to cook in the summertime. But in the wintertime, there's another issue. If you don't have wood fuel, you will freeze to death. So you have to burn it to keep warm. So if you're in this summer village that has hundreds of acres between you and the forest, it becomes very inconvenient in the winter time to live in the summer village. So we would go out and live in the domed wigwams for the few months of the winter until the syrup run, the maple syrup run in the spring. And we would stay in there and we would have our syrup camps and dwellings like this. And then after the syrup was done and the soil began to warm, we would then move back into our planting village, our summer village. Kispoko town, uh, here we are representing those villages and those people that Tecumseh visited. And here we have a replication of a birch bark conical wigwam. Now a lot of people look at this and they say, that's a teepee. And I would say, you know what, you're pretty much right. There's very little that separates this conical wigwam from a teepee. Uh, they're framed exactly the same. Uh, in the Mi'kmaq nations up into the northern parts of Canada, these are very typical. Uh, and they covered them, they framed them up the same way with a lodgepole pine. It was the same as a teepee, the same way. The only major difference is with a teepee, they were framed the same, but they were covered with 
buffalo hides. And here in the eastern woodlands, yeah, we had some buffalo, but nothing like the way they had it out in the prairies out west. So out west, you would have seen the exact same shape, framed up with a lodgepole pine, but covered with buffalo hides. Now, we go up into the northern parts of Canada, into the Mi'kmaq people, the Mi'kmaq nations, and they had that birch, that paper birch tree that grows way up north. Again, doesn't grow down here in Ohio. You can't get it to grow. We have planted some ornamental hybrid uh, per paper birch trees to give people idea. They're still not doing too good. It doesn't grow too well down here. But Tecumseh did visit these people, and so we want to represent them through their dwelling. Uh, here, we, obviously, we couldn't get enough paper birch to do this. We have used a cottonwood veneer that I get from a volunteer group that gives me this, and I use this to completely cover the uh, framing. Again, this isn't framed up with lodgepole pine, people. This is, again, the emerald ash boring beetle from the ash trees. Everything here in the park is done with the ash trees. Okay, so we framed it up with ash trees, we covered it with a cottonwood veneer, and then I painted it to replicate what birch bark would have looked like. So at a distance, boy, it's really hard to separate it from the real deal. So it's a pretty good example of a birch bark conical wigwam. Hello, this is Donna Lewis with the Clark County Park District again. Please join us today for part three of a tour through the Indian Village with Justin Houston, living historian, here at George Rogers Clark Park. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.